<laughs> so I mean, we'll focus on just the anything that's semi semi modeling related today, as far as uh, sculpting, your topo, poly modeling, uh, modeling with curves. Uh, nerds don't count because they're terrible. And don't know what to build. Uh, do they even work? I don't know. Yeah. Really? Every single time, 
So we might look at that a little bit. And then I'm more than happy to also take requests throughout. Um, since we're going to, I think we've got a full hour, so we can kind of take our time. Um, so if you have a particular modeling problem related to whether it's polymodeling, uh, topology, sculpting, but either multi-res or dynamic topology, feel free to speak up uh, and we'll, we'll start. So the first thing I'm going to do is if anybody has seen uh, Bart Veldhausen out in the lobby, he's doing 3D scans with an iPad. He's trying to scan basically everyone here at the conference. <laughs> and so this is, this is actually the result of one of those scans. Uh, this, this was not done here. This was actually done at SIGGRAPH. Um, and it actually includes all the texture data. So this is scanned from an iPad. Actually, uh, Kelsey, do you want to grab the light? Just, maybe to just turn it down a little bit. That works. <laughs> okay, so, so with the scan data, um, you know, a lot of the, a lot of times you might use this for 3D printing or for prototyping or for doing visualization. But generally, particularly if you look at the actual mesh, there's not a lot of detail in it. So, you know, there's a few different things we might want to do. We might want to add in more detail. We might need to clean up the data. There might, might be holes in the mesh. And so let's actually start a fresh file. And I'm just going to actually import the original OBJ. And so I'll just go file and import. All right, so this is the, the actual OBJ that was uh, exported out from the scanner. And there's a couple of things with it. Number one, notice it does actually, it actually has a material, although it's set up with Blender and Kernel. So if I wanted to see the textures, I can just really quickly add in, just change it over to these nodes and pull in my image texture. And that way we can just actually see the textures. So obviously this is being scanned data you can see the mesh is just a lot of triangles. It looks a little bit like a dynamic topology mesh. Um, I've lost my texture. So if we look at it, we've got all of our texture data. And with the texture, it looks a little bit more detailed than it actually is, but it's not. But there's a couple of problems with it. So number one, it didn't capture my hat very well. And there's actually a couple of holes in it. So there's a hole here and a hole here. And so both of these, you know, we would probably want to get rid of if we were do, you know, if we were printing this or if we wanted to turn this into an actual model of some kind, we we probably want to update it. Sorry? Right. There's a little there's a little bit more room on the floor inside. And there's some room over here. So if we wanted to to fill this, um, just to start by cleaning up the data. And actually as far as 3D scan data goes, this is really good. Um, most scan data that you get will often be um, uh, it's basically just a point cloud and there'll be holes all over the place and you know the fact that it actually got under the hat and things like that is pretty good. Now I think that maybe the, the scanning software has some post-processing to try and fill those holes automatically anyway. Um, so that definitely helps. But what we're going to do is we're just going to fill it easily with edit mode and dynamic topology. So I'm just going to switch in edit mode. Since it's not a super high res mesh, it's actually pretty easy to just go in here and I can just go into vertex mode. And then in wireframe, using just something like the circle select, just grab that whole area and just delete them. I really don't care about it being clean. It's already triangulated and messy and whatnot, so it's not a big deal. Oh, there we go. Um, is that a little better? So, let me turn off the light so we can see the screen. Um, ah, okay. So I don't have, you know, I don't need to worry about it being clean. I can just grab it, and then all I want to do is I can just select all my non-manifold edges, so basically any open edges, and I can do that just by using the select, and it's there. It is non-manifold. It's also Control Alt Shift M, and it's just going to select all of those vertices. Now you notice that in a couple of these, it's left a few dangling triangles, and so I can actually just hit X. I'm going to delete faces again which will just ensure that all of those open triangles get deleted, and then I can select, oh, yeah, that, that one, yeah. Uh, here we go. Delete edges, and then, eh, either way. Select it, and then we're just gonna hit F, there we go. So hitting F to fill it will work, and you can see that it's captured both sides, so both sides are filled, and so then I'll do the other hole, Again, just using circle select, grab some of those vertices, hit X, delete them, 
select my non-manifold, hit F to fill it, and that's it. So the holes are filled. Now they're flat, and the thing to know 